We've been looking back at the last 12 months and now, of course, it behoves us, doesn't it, to look forward. Joining me on the programme is Mal Fletcher, futurist and social commentator and the chairman of the Futures Forum 2030+. Plus. Mal, good morning to you. Good morning, Vanessa. Good to speak with you. Well, it's with sort of some degree of nervous apprehension, but also a kind of element of hope as well, that I ask you, what are the changes that you foresee for us all in the next six to 12 months? Well, it's a great question, Vanessa. I mean, there are many, uh, and some of them are very hopeful. One of the things we will see, I think, because of our new appreciation of, of community, yeah. uh, is the way we, we do work, the way we uh, we treat our high streets, for example. And we can't measure yet the full impact of the pandemic on mental health. That'll take some time. But some fairly recent data suggested that in 2020, almost one in two people in the UK were feeling down or depressed about the future because of COVID. Yes. And we know physical isolation is a major contributor to those feelings. So I think the drive for community will affect how business negotiates home working. Mm -hmm. If that takes up an entire week, it cuts us off from mental health benefits of socialising. And the drive for community might transform, as I say, our high streets because big chain stores, sadly, in some areas have closed down and local councils will start looking at town centres and pedestrianising streets, putting in perhaps urban produce gardens, pop-up installations, allowing the community to be involved in those transformations. So that could be a positive. And, and, and what about in terms of relationships? I think some people fear that their social connections have broken down. At the beginning, they did their very best to shore them up and to, to make, make, make absolutely certain that they were talking to the people they consider to be their friends. And then as the months have rolled on, there's been less and less to say, nothing to do, and, and it's been cold. And, and people are worried that when they want to spark up social interaction again, it's not going to be there. Yeah, I think that's a valid point. Um... I think it's true to say that in most cases in history where something like this has happened, certainly in modern times, mm -hmm. anything not pandemic but 9-11, things like that, yeah. the human emotional response to a threatening event often outlives the technical cause of the event. So in a sense, I think the post-pandemic era won't start until people start to feel safe in larger groups again. Yes. Um, some people, especially young people, are ready to mix with crowds tomorrow because crowds are fun. But others will take a little more time, be a little more reticent. So we might find some, some gathering places like theatres, concert halls, sports stadiums, keeping a form of social distancing at least for a while until people can feel safe in a crowd. But we'll, get, we'll definitely be seeking community as soon as we can. And, and do you think the rehabilitation period will be fairly short? You know, you feel very nervous about the first time, for example, if you've been in a position where you haven't had to go on public transport, so you haven't done it, and then it turns out it's almost a year and you really haven't been anywhere near a bus or train, you might feel very nervous about it. But once you've done it once, do you think that's pretty much it? You slip back into whatever it was you did before? Yeah, I think you do. I mean, I would normally travel many times in a year, like your previous caller, but I haven't done any travelling at all yeah. in the last year. So I think I'll just quickly, I haven't missed airports, I have to be honest. Mm. Um, but, but I think you'll, you'll see that too in things like uh, uh, consumer spending, the, 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 the attitude of taking a little while just to dip our feet in the water before we jump in. I have to say with that, in the medium term, I think we'll have a more frugal attitude to spending for a while than we did in, say, 2019. And once you've faced a disease that threatens your ability to breathe, yeah. your ability to spend doesn't seem all that important. So we might be a little more frugal. I mean, it's interesting that you say that when in, simultaneously we, we read, for example, that you know every there are some some restaurants that are fully booked out until September, where people are just desperate to you know taste somebody's cooking that isn't theirs, to go out to be in a social situation, have somebody else bring you some food on a plate that you haven't cooked yourself, and people, some people, of course, have accrued some money that they wouldn't otherwise have had by this time. That's absolutely right. And I think, yes, people are booking ahead, even holidays, in the hope that we can get to do something. But the point I think I would make is that we may not do the whole range of things as readily as we did before. We may not be doing all of them at once. We might for a little while and then settle back down. But I think it'll take a little time for some people to, as I said, dip their feet in the water. And I do think when it comes to that, that area of buying generally, we might be a little more tuned to use and repair than simply buying products that have a short shelf life. I think there's been some statistics and some studies on that recently that people are becoming more wary of that old principle of planned obsolescence. You know, the product should be designed to last only a short period of time. I think we'll be a little more consumer savvy 
going forward. And the work-life balance that has been so terribly unbalanced that some people haven't been able to work at all and some people have done nothing but work and homeschool all at the same time. It's been very difficult. It's certainly made us think about it maybe more than we used to. Absolutely. I think commuting is affected. Uh, whether you're commuting into London or just around London to get to work, I think um, it was halfway through last year, something like 30% of British workers said they'd like to continue to work at home at least part of the time beyond the pandemic if they could. And home working brings great benefits, obviously, for the environment, some for employers in terms of work, worker satisfaction. But it's not so good for collaborative innovation. So offices will still be important for a lot of people, but they'll have to change. And already we're seeing this. Some offices now offering a more what I'd call whole of life experience, providing access to decent food, opportunities for exercise at work, downtime during working hours. Some are even taking on staggered working hours as a permanent feature to allow you know, people to be more flexible with their travel. I don't think people going back after COVID season is through will be satisfied to commute for long periods of time every day just to sit in tiny cubicles to someone else's timetable. Well, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. That's Mel Fletcher. They're the futurist and social commentator.